So here it what it can look like. That excenter clamp or excenter lever there. Really tight and thick on there. There's no way it can move actually. Uh, it, it seems to be on the handle at the end point. So we'll make a new one with a little bit more clamping margin. Because it is really nice if both needles point upwards. Uh, with the adjustment margin here I can adjust it so I have both of them at the same point uh, direction and uh, the, the design change uh, I think it came up uh, as an advantage actually yeah, yeah there need to be a hole The spindle is so poor, I mean, I have to check that, but I have to reduce it first. So 20% of what is intended. Oh great, the whole floor is full of chips. So it is getting late today, but I will do a first pouring and just to establish a zero point. <laughs> Classic, a lot of vibrations there, a lot of vibrations. Not really. So it went really fine on the way down there. There's still some experimentation distance available. It is of course this long distance here, but I don't want to cut it right now. I don't have any more of those components here. So a classic thing that is to reduce the speed and speed, so let's try that. Went good all the way down there. I can reduce the speed a little bit more. Yeah, I think that is it. Here it is, straight from the household oven. Hmm, smells a bit like pizza, but never mind. Let's see if we can do this. We can! <laughs> How good wasn't that? So there it is uh, level there. That was good, it looked uh, fine. Now let just let it sit there. There, it, yeah, it is taking some heat there, so ah, just let it cool down. Ah, it is firm there. Yeah. This is tight. Oh, great! But this is too long. I should uh, cut it off later. Nice. See if I can put it together. So go in there. And I want to flip it on like that. No, that 
that was too soft. I would need. I would need more pressure down. Uh, two new ones. Here are the two new ones. I better not mix them up. Let's see if we can take out that one. I'll throw them away. Here, there is no support for this. So we will get rid of the support. And then ream up this. So this is one of those reamers that I never use. Come in very handy here. Let's just try one first. Oh, <laughs> well, it's certainly tightened up things here. But how nice was that? Maybe I can leave that. I do the second one. And then we will see. That will be alright. And now it sits really, really tight. By the way, I found out why it looked like the holes for the indicator clock were in the wrong position. And I had to do some corrective actions there. <coughs> Let me take you over to the CAD system and I'll show you. This is the 2D sketch that is the basis for the 3D model and there is that half a millimeter dimension. It is a leftover from an ancient try. I had indicator clocks that didn't point in the same direction so I compensated for one of the clocks with that dimension. That was a long time ago so I saw the dimension when I started the design for this video series and then forgot all about it. But that's all good and not a problem but certainly will play a major role shortly. In the NC preparation setup I set the zero position as one always must do and that's all good, no problem with that half a millimeter. But now it comes. I have added several rectangles to the model to act as containment areas for the tool. Yeah, in order to not run into the clamps with the mill either on the edges or in the middle and I sometimes only want to work in a certain area. And check out how many NC operations I have on the upper part. More than 30 different operations. Anyways, when I do a design change, and uh, when I add or modify one of those tool area rectangles and return back into the manufacturing mode, more often than not the zero position is lost and it needs to be re-established. And here is where that half a millimeter sometimes has come upwards and sometimes downwards. And that caused the position of the indicator clocks to be off by one millimeter. Yeah, so it is explained. Yeah, I think this will be more or less permanent in this hole now. Ah. Ah, there we have it. I couldn't find my 1 2 3 box right now, so I will use this one. So at that position I want to have both of them at zero. About sturdiness, it's very much sturdier now. Then we see here, it is out there. I have to go over here. Yeah, then I have to adjust this one a little bit. Yeah. Then that's zero. And go back. Zero. That's pretty much there. You saw that, that plastic one, how oh, it flexed. This one doesn't flex at all. This is really much better. Anyways, anyways. As yeah, so you see here, minus 4, plus 3. Okay, by all means, we can fix that. It's just 5 micrometers, let's go down there. Yeah. Maybe it's got that, okay. 
So now three and a half and three point two. So this is uh, too much, but this is not really the problem here. I mean, this is uh, in one way, this is nothing. So this I can live with really, but uh, of course I will fix it now when I am in the mood for that. But there is that with the axis. Let's check that instead. Actually, this isn't so bad, but that is only because I have already compensated for the error or the leaning axis, and that is quite a bit here. So I have it um, for every meter it takes in the y direction, it has to move two millimeters over two millimeters. I can show you later how I have done that in leaning. Since see, I have already compensation in the y direction and uh, z direction since long time ago. Um, so while I was adjusting the Y and Z axis, I just didn't have the energy to also look at the X axis. But uh, it's time now, obviously. Um, 